안녕하십니까? 이존 치과의 손영희입니다. Hello, I'm Dr. Son Young Hui. I'm with e j o n g Dental Office. Today, I'm going to talk about what needs to be considered and what needs to be understood to place an implant in the mandibular anterior. The mandibular anterior has unique features compared to other regions in the mouth. So we need to keep those in mind to reduce the failure and increase the success rate of implant. To place an implant in the mandibular anterior, as you all may be aware, we need to consider the anatomical limitations. First, the bone itself has small volume, buccolingual and mesiodistal width is very narrow, so the types of implants that we can use there are limited. And second, Compared to other areas, the cortical bone portion is high, the bone is hard. So when we do drilling, we cannot drill in the direction that we want or the drill can be displaced easily and our tactile sense may not work there properly. So even if we drill in a wrong direction, we may not be aware of that. And when we put more force there, lingual perforation or cortical bone perforation can occur. The ridge is sloped like this, and mesiodistally, the width is very narrow. So the implants that we can select based on Austin implants, MS implants, TS3 3.0, 3.5 diameter implants may be chosen for the mandible anterior. 3.5 millimeter diameter implants may not be used in most cases, mostly 3.0 millimeter diameter implants are used. First, one body MS system implants can be placed. We need to consider these. The indications for the MS implants, narrow reach width, the implant is indicated for the mandibular anterior or maxillary laterals. In the mandibular anterior, the average coronal part mesodistal width is 5 to 5.5 millimeters, and the cervical mesodistal average width is 3.5 to 4.0 millimeters. So if the diameters are bigger than this, the implants cannot be used here. In placing an implant, it should not be buckly positioned because the MS implants are one body implants. So prosthetically, we cannot modify the angulation. So the placement angle is the angle we have to use for prosthesis. So implants angulation is very important when it comes to MS implants. And it is recommended that an implant should be lingually positioned 0.5 millimeters. I believe 0.5 millimeter is a bit excessive, so I recommend it should be positioned 1 millimeter lingually positioned. So preventing perforation on the lingual side is very important. In placing an implant in the mandible anterior, lingual perforation absolutely needs to be avoided. Lingual perforation can be disastrous, and if we touch blood vessels, it will be out of control because of the bleeding, so that needs to be kept in mind. Second, the angulation. Based on the opposing tooth, the implant angulation should be determined considering the cingulum of the opposing tooth. 
when you place an implant rather than labially inclined placement, the implant should be bodily shifted to the lingual side a little bit and not to damage the cortical bone. In placing an MS implant, we need to pay attention to one more thing. It is a single case, no problem. For example, if number 32 and 42 are missing together, and if we place implants at 32 and 42, and for unit bridge will be delivered after extracting all four anteriors. MS implants tapering angle is 5 degrees, so if you place two implants, up to 10 degree modification or correction can be made. When multiple implants are placed and splinted, you need to pay attention to the parallelism of the angles of the two implants to avoid any difficulties. If the angle is bigger than 10 degrees when two implants are placed, preparation can be done. So prosthesis can be made. However, doing preparation for the prosthesis is not good compared to not doing preparation at all. So the two implants need to be parallel within 10 degrees. We have looked at buccolingual positioning of an implant. Mesiodistally, we can follow the positioning of other implants. The ideal position is at the center of final prosthesis, and there should be some distance from the alveolar bone of adjacent teeth. As you know, the distance should be around 1.5 millimeters. MS implants of vertical positioning. The color size of MS implants are 2 millimeters or 4 millimeters. So there are two choices. Which one do we need to choose based on the height of margin of a prosthesis? The margin of the prosthesis should be in the similar height compared to the adjacent teeth. Personally, I recommend the color height of 4 mm MS implants because of the biologic width. Let's look at a case where an MS implant is used. The chief complaint of the patient was the mobility at number 41 tooth and pain during chewing. Based on the CT and standard views, number 41 tooth has severe bone loss and the periodontal ligament space widening has occurred all the way to the apex. Implants, MS implants must be used here. So restoration using MS implant is planned. A traumatic extraction should be done in the mandibular anterior. A traumatic extraction is easy to do, so the tooth is extracted and a flapless implant placement is planned. Implants drilling point it should be a little bit lingually positioned to do drilling along the cingulum of adjacent teeth. As you can see here, in my case, I have a habit of putting my finger on the lingual cortical bone of the patient while drilling to make sure the drilling doesn't go toward lingual side. Second, Narrow diameter implants, such as MS implants, you need to be careful when you do drilling and if you make a mistake, it's almost impossible to make a correction. In placing MS implants, the number of drills that you use is just two. So, except the pilot drill, Drilling is finished with just one drill, so the angle or direction of drilling is wrong. It's not possible to make a correction, and it is almost impossible to change the placement positions. Initial drilling is very important. 
more important than other cases. As I said before, one or two drilling is needed. No chance of correction. When an error occurs, it will be disastrous. In some cases, you may not be able to place an implant there, so you need to be extra careful during initial drilling. Placement can be done simply. It is placed. In this patient, sling suture is made. You don't really have to do it. And provisionalization is made before finishing the surgery. Post-op standard view and CT. The implant is properly placed on the CT. The cortical bone of lingual plate is very thick. In this case, drilling cannot go to the lingual side even if you wanted to. So you don't need to make efforts to change the angle during the initial drilling. Going with the flow would be good enough. The probability of penetrating into the lingual cortical plate is very low. But if you try to force to change the drilling angle, a problem may occur. This is the panorama after delivering the final prosthesis, standard view, and CT. During the follow-up, it is very well maintained and there was no problems or complaints from the patient. Like this, MS implant is placed in the mandible anterior. During the latent period or the waiting period, I believe for mandibular implant placement, we can load the implant after waiting about eight weeks. Provisionalization can be done with immediate restoration concept without loading. Like this, if you use an MS implant with a color length of four millimeters, it is favorable for prosthesis and in determining vertical positions of an implant. Second, when you use a two-piece implant in the anterior mandible, TS 3.0 and 3.5 mm implants can be used in the mandible anterior if the diameter of an implant increases, so does the risk, because with a bigger diameter, the surrounding bone thickness will decrease. Therefore, risk would be increased. To place a two-piece implant, you need to carefully establish a treatment plan before choosing the diameter of an implant to be placed. In most cases, where two-piece implants are used, GBR would be required. The four mandibular anterior teeth are extracted in this patient. If you look at the x-ray, the bone loss has progressed quite considerably. The patient used the splinted temporary but couldn't bear anymore, so we decided to extract all four mandibular anterior teeth. And two implants are planned for number 32 and 42. A pre-op photo, pre-op CT of number 32 and number 42. It is thick, so 3 millimeters or bigger implants can be placed. Thus, TS3 3 millimeter two-piece implants are selected. Teeth are extracted, as I said before. Very carefully, the treatment plan should be established, so I chose to do a guided surgery for the implant placement. Three by ten implants, two of them were placed. Post-op CT, as you can see, labial bone doesn't remain much, so we had to do the bone graft before finishing the surgery. Post-op standard view and post-op CT view. 
at number 32 and 42, you can see the augmented bone. Post-op three weeks, provisionalization was performed. That's all free from any guidance. So post-op 12 weeks, final prosthesis was delivered. Post-op 12 weeks, CT. You can see the labial bone augmentation. The mandibular anterior has cortical bones, so blood supply is not very good. So remodeling volume is a bit more compared to other areas. So I was worried, but it went well. Post-op 12 months, they are still very well maintained. So two-piece implants are used in the mandibular anterior. We talked about what we need to be careful about. So, in placing one body or two piece implants in the mandibular anterior, things to consider and to be careful about have been discussed. Mandibular anterior implants compared to other areas. Placing an implant there is rather challenging, especially one body, the MS implant can be used and two piece implants need to be used and things to consider can be different between those two one body implant requires a very careful path control of the implant the placement path would remain which cannot be modified later so you need to be careful about the depth control of the implant if possible you need to use an MS implant with a color length of 4 millimeters for more convenient treatment. For the two-piece implant, diameter is bigger, so the residual bone or bone wall thickness would be reduced. So if you plan to use a two-piece implant for the mandibular anterior, in most cases, additional bone graft is required on the labial side. Keep that in mind. So, I've talked about implant placement in the mandibular anterior. As I said before, the bone quality there is very hard. So, during drilling, it is not easy to do drilling there. And drilling can be easily displaced and Problems can easily occur if you apply force in a wrong direction. Please keep those in mind. I hope your implant placement would be successful. And I'll come back next time. Thank you.